<laughs> All right. Welcome, everyone. My name is Peter Draws, and I'm excited to announce that today I have a guest with me. This is David Parker of Fig Boot on Pens. David, how are you? Good, thank you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate yeah. it. Thanks for joining me. David, of course, has his own YouTube channel, which, of course, there are links to in the description. You should go check it out. But um, I'm really looking forward to today. Uh, we're going to look at some pens and stuff. I, of course, am little bit new to pens comparatively and he has some uh, I've heard he has some very cool pens uh, that we're gonna look at try out hear about I'm gonna ask David a few questions about himself about his pens what do you think David sounds good I just thought this would be a neat opportunity because your channel for the most part focuses on art with a little bit of pens just getting into them just man. getting into them and I thought it would be interesting to show you not to get you to jump off the deep end yet but kind of what's out there that maybe you haven't and your viewers haven't been exposed to yet mm -hmm. as far as some of what I feel are some of the really cool things that are out there. So I have some things that are a little less expensive, but then other things that are kind of on the more expensive scale. And, you know, maybe you can see if a $2,000 pen is just as pleasurable to write with as, you know, a, a $15 one. There are pens that are $2,000? Yes, and I have one here that you could try out today. All right, well, maybe we'll have to... If you sign a waiver. <laughs> will you, have you signed the waiver? Well, uh, maybe I can sign the waiver with the pen. Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> maybe we can work our way up to that. Sure. And uh, I don't know. Yeah. Well, how about you show us one pen to start out with? Sure. Yeah. Now, you know what? To start off with, uh, pens uh, can be pieces of art. And there is a company based out of Brooklyn called Pen 18111, okay. uh, who is a gentleman by the name of Yoshi, and he creates pens that look like this. Uh, this is called the Night Sky Sakura, and this thing is just amazing. First of all, he turns all of his acrylics, and then what he does is he actually uh, laser engraves each one of these flowers into wow. the pen. So these are all handmade. Yes. And then, so all of these are engraved into the flowers, and then he creates a resin and fills the resin into the crater that's created. So this is not paint. It's actually more resin that's kind of, think of it like a pothole that got filled. Yeah. And then also what's incredible is this is a, uh, a, a casted, um, this is bronze, uh, uh, basically a tree limb uh, that is kind of the roll stop. And uh, this one is called Night Sky Sakura. Sakura is the, uh, the Japanese cherry blossom tree. Mm. Uh, and then I also have another one here that oh, is called, yes, it's called the Pink Sakura. Actually, when I purchased this one, I was having a hard time deciding between the two, and I purchased this one. And, and then the next year when I uh, went back to a pen show, I had to pick this one up. I thought they looked like a nice pair. But I thought you'd like to have the chance to at least take a look at that one and uh, and draw with that. All right. So this is acrylic? or Yeah, it's an acrylic resin. Uh, and the nib on this is, is a, a, a Yovo nib. Uh, there are... Uh, there's a limited number of, of nib manufacturers in the world that some companies make their own nibs, a few do, uh, but then uh, a lot of companies use the same types of nibs. There's a company by the name of Bach that makes a lot of nibs and yeah. provides a lot of nibs, and Yovo is one that provides a large number of nibs. So if you have like a stainless steel nib on a pen, yeah. there's a very good chance it's a, a Yovo or a Bach nib, even if it's branded for another product. Should I write? I don't know. I always, what is there a thing you typically do? You write the name of the pen, or I, you know, I usually write the name of the pen. I write the name of the ink, <laughs> and then I always write the the quick brown dog. I was uh, just right. Fox jumps over the lazy dog. I was just write hello and test <laughs> and hello. My name is Peter. <laughs> well, I always thought that if I um. I, I debated when I was, was starting to make my videos what I should write for my writing sample and. Dear viewers. Yeah. I, and I ended up with uh, the, you know, the quick brown fox just oh. because I didn't want to uh, have to debate about it and, and sweat over it every single time if I wanted to change. The ink matches the pen. And it is a pretty pen. You can see here, like, even this part of it isn't just a plain flat blue. It's yeah. got a lot of texture in there. There's a lot of chatoyance in there. Oh, uh, chatoyance. Yeah, chatoyance. Is that a pen word? Uh, no, that's basically like a pearlescent, kind of a shiny mm. depth. It's a new one for me, yeah. 
And so this is maybe a little bit of flex? Yeah, not a lot. You're not going to get as much flex out of a stainless steel nib as you will with a gold nib or a platinum nib, or I'm sorry, a, a palladium nib. So how much of the flex, how much of the flex is determined by what it's made out of and how much of it is determined by the shape of it and the, the construction? Yeah, it's a combination of both. Uh, there are certain things you can do in order to increase the flexibility of the nib. And uh, we'll take a look at a pen later that you'll see is a drastically different looking nib. And all of the things that are different are things that uh, go into adding to its flexibility that we'll take a look at in a little bit. There's a little heart for the viewers from us. Very nice. Yeah. But uh, I just, that's just one of those stunningly beautiful pens that is, uh, you know, you hand that to someone and they can't help but just kind of uh, having their jaw drop uh, just because it's not just a writing instrument. It's a, it's a piece of art. Oh, definitely. That's definitely unlike it, any of that I have. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So next up, we're going to take a look at uh, a pen that I think that you will like the feeling of. This is a Pilot Custom Arushi. For Pilot, this is one of their top of the line models. Right off the bat, can I say that this is also bigger than any pen I have? Uh, this is a very hefty and large pen. Uh, and that, um, you know, we don't necessarily discuss price on all of these pens, but this pen is probably around $1,200. Uh, it is made from something that we'll discuss on a few of these pens. Um, it has an Arushi lacquer finish to it. Um, I'll probably discuss Arushi lacquer a little bit more when we talk about a different pen, but just suffice to say Arushi lacquer is something that's very unique and special and adds a lot to the value and craftsmanship of pens. So that's not just a black material, it's actually uh, an ebonite that is this Arushi, many, many layers of this Arushi lacquer on here. And you'll see on here that it has a very large, this is actually a, a number 30 pilot nib. And you'll see the difference in the feeling of that nib compared to the stainless steel nib. Uh, it's very ornate. Yeah. yeah. It, it's fairly large. And you'll, you'll definitely feel the difference. It's going to be considerably smoother and almost feel like you're writing on glass. Whoa, that, that surprised me right off the bat. I, yeah, I, it surprised me. I almost, yeah. So you can feel the value difference just, I mean, just in the nib alone and, and I, how it feels. I can feel it. Yeah, that is different than anything I've felt before as far as pens go. It's kind of dreamy, but also it's got weight to it. Yes. It, it feels substantive. Not that an expensive pen needs to feel heavy, but sometimes it helps to have a little bit of weight because it... Um, it does help kind of make you a feeling of quality and a feeling of value. But that's one of the higher end pilots uh, in their in their standard line. Uh, that's kind of the the king of their standard line. And I then can they see get, why. Yeah. And then they get into their Namiki line, which we'll does look this at one post? Like, I know um, it does. Do you post your pens? Or? You know, it really depends because sometimes I'm almost afraid to yeah. like the, uh, on this particular pen. I wouldn't, even though um, it it not going to harm the pen, but or not going to harm it if you do it once or twice, but over time it might potentially harm yeah, the Arushi lacquer. Yeah. It, because it's not, this particular pen isn't just a straight acrylic. There's that lacquer on there, which is... You just don't really yeah. want to put anything on here that's not your hand, right? Yeah, and but some pens are meant to post, and a lot of it is based on balance. There's some pens that feel very balanced when they're posted, and other ones feel considerably back weighted and it throws off the balance of the and pen. And this one feels fine without, yeah. And this cap is so huge, right? Yes. It's, like, it, it's okay, the pen is long enough. It's not like you have to have the extra length on it's there. It's not a dinky little Quico Sport or whatever. Yeah, yeah, to where you, you know, a, a Lilliput or something like that, or Quebeco Sport, where you, it's designed to where you need to. Yeah. But that's called the Pilot Custom. I'm very impressed Arushi. by that one. Yeah. Okay, this is one that I thought that you would really enjoy uh, from a drawing standpoint. 
And this is a pen from a company called Sailor. And this is a 1911 standard, is the, uh, is the model name. And what's unique about this particular pen is that it has what's called a zoom nib on it. Zoom? Yes, zoom. And the uniqueness of the zoom nib is that this one particular nib is meant to be written with in a number of different ways. So if you, you yeah, can demonstrate yeah, to where you could write with this upside nib down. upside down. And if you write with it upside down, it gives you a nice, very fine line. But then if you can write with it straight up, which typically you're not doing with a fountain pen, it gives you a nice medium line. And then the, as you angle down, the farther you angle down, the wider the line gets. Wow. And that what's nice about that is it's a good writing experience in any of these orientations. And so like this pen is one that you could post if you wanted to, if you needed the extra length. But if, especially if you're into art and you're wanting to get different variations of line width from, from the same pen with the same ink, then this is a perfect nib for you and it's the zoom the z-o-o-m nib upside down now a lot of pens aren't intended to write upside down with right correct mostly they're not um i, I it seems like everyone who does reviews usually does a little reverse writing i've and, never even considered it uh and mainly it's because with people draw and things like that they want to get a real super fine line and sometimes some pens are better at that than others uh, a lot of them aren't ground to be able to be used that way and so they can be very sharp and, and rigid when they're used that way this but one, this one is meant to be written in all orientations it uh is it wrong to use the word juicy when it comes to a pen? No, no. Very, very wet, <laughs> very yeah. juicy. Like it really flows well, yeah. Yeah. Wait, so I can do low like this. Or I can do straight up and down. Yep. And I can do backwards or upside down, right? Yeah. And even backwards, it still feels very smooth. Oh, yeah. No problems at all. Yeah. Those are not very nice, smooth lines right here. Yeah. Not skipping or anything. So it gives you some variety in using the very same pen, especially if you're using it for art or something, or uh, you know, if you're using it for uh, um, uh, for some of the uh, you know Japanese or or Chinese symbols and things like that. It's it's not necessarily meant to be used for that, but you can get some variation in there. Yeah, this one's cool because I've found even with art, it's good to have some variations in line with. It really helps drawings pop a little sometimes. So. Uh, but sailors are very nice uh, one of the older pen companies in existence kind of Jap Japan has kind of the big three which is platinum and sailor and pilot which have all been founded right around a hundred years ago mm -hmm. okay something a little bit different since we discussed um, Arushi lacquer earlier I wanted to kind of let you know a little bit about some I'll of turn the page over sure here. This pen here is very special in my mind, and this is a pen from a company called Nakaya, and this is a called a dorsal fin 2. Now, they had a dorsal fin 1, and it just had this fin only on the cap, and this is dorsal fin 2, meaning there's one on the cap and the barrel. And Arushi lacquer is something that's that it's very fascinating because it is a natural substance. Think of it like a sap that comes from a tree. But you can only get about a cup of Arushi lacquer from a tree every eight years. Wow. So this is the second time we've seen Arushi lacquer today, right? Yeah. yeah. And so what happens is so it's a natural substance that then they add dye to and then they can apply it on pens and it can create some very interesting looks and shading and depth to it. For this particular pen, when they apply Arushi lacquer, and in most of the cases, it's something where you apply the Arushi lacquer and then you, there's different variations of how to apply it. Sometimes they apply it and let it dry. Other times they apply it, wipe it off mm -hmm. and then let it dry. But then what you see here is literally like you know, a hundred layers of Arushi lacquer. Wow. And then it gets sanded down or buffed down to where then you can see different layers. So of, it's very time consuming yeah, process. So, so something like this would take literally months to make. And this particular, like these fins are just built up Arushi lacquer. Now there's a little bit of base underneath it, but it's just built up, built up, built up. This Nakaya is an interesting company. Uh, it is 
basically associated with the Platinum Pen Company in Japan. And, oh, it leaked out a little bit here. Let me just clean that up a little bit. But um, Platinum is one of the older pen companies in the world, and they have a number of artisans who have worked for them for you know, 40, 50 years, and they retire. And when they, some of the gentlemen who have retired have gone to work for this much smaller kind of artisan company called Nakaya, and it's basically all the, the retired guys who are kind of making pens on their own, on their own time, and they make what they want to make and make them when they want to make them. Yeah. And it's not tied so it's like a It's like a labor of love sort yes. of thing. Yeah. So now anything from Nakaya has been is is very coveted and um and and of high quality and beauty and uh, and rarity just because a lot of times models all of a sudden won't be available for a year or like this particular pen when just I ordered whoever it, decided to make them don't don't feel like making yeah, them anymore. If yeah. they don't decide if they don't want to make it anymore then they just don't make it anymore. Uh and the waiting list can be very long. Uh, you, this particular pen, when I ordered it, was basically told that it would be 13 months before you'd get it. So you order it and wait. And just uh, hope, hope you forget about it so it doesn't feel like you're waiting so long. Yes, and then you get an email. Actually, I ordered it in one November because my birthday's in November, and I figured it would be my birthday gift to myself for the next year. Uh, but then, actually, uh, this particular one, they told me it'd be 13 months, but then it actually showed up about three months later. So the nib says Nakaya? Yeah. 14 karat gold. Yep. That's oh, very crisp. Yeah, it that one is very firm. Yeah. No, I like that too. And it has a bit of feedback, so it can almost be like writing with a, a pencil in a way. I, I like that. This is it's a good feeling. I don't know. I'm just kind of So that one doesn't have as much flex, even though it's a gold nib. Right, yeah. So there is several factors determining what flex is, right? Yes. Do you have what you would consider a daily writer? I, I I rotate through my pens on a regular basis. That's good. That way they all get a little bit more love. Yes, I, and I'm okay. I'm, I'm a data analyst in my real life, and so I have all these spreadsheets and things like that. And I have like a, a big spreadsheet. I keep track of all of my collection, and then what pen I use every day. And so then I, uh, I can I keep track of how long it's been since I've used them. So it's like okay, I haven't touched this one in three months, and so I need to you know you need to use this one today type of thing uh and then on my instagram i actually kind of post a picture of the pen i took to work with me that day follow his instagram yeah. that would be figboot11 at instagram and that i yes i my most of my postings are of my pen of the day which is the the pen that i took with me to work that day i'm gonna get this i'm gonna get it to line up you could do it it's just a, it's a process there can only be so many Boom. There you go. I knew you could do it. <laughs> it's a good feeling once it matches up. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Next up is I have pens can be made of unique materials. Okay. There's acrylics, which are very common. So uh, what have we had so far? We've had acrylic. We've had some yeah. lacquer. We've had some acrylic. We've had some... Uh, some uh, more of so, some more standard plastics. Mm -hmm. uh, we had ebonite. some ebonite, yeah. yes, uh, which is kind of a rubberish it's material, like hardened rubber. Yeah, or it's yeah. a hardened rubber material. Uh, a lot of feeds are made of a, uh, of ebonite. Most I, heard, I heard they used like uh, like the hardened rubber like before plastic was invented. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so most feeds are either going to be plastic or ebonite and uh, a lot of people kind of there's the feed is the bit under the nib usually. yes right yeah. absolutely and most of these had the ones i've shown you i think this one hasn't no nope, all these have been plastic i'm not sure if i have an ebonite one in here we'll see uh but um uh Ebonite, especially for a feed, is one of those words that is just kind of a, a, a popular word and phrase to where if some people kind of like it when it has an ebonite feed, even though a lot of the plastic ones perform it doesn't just really as well. matter as much. Yeah, it doesn't matter as much. People say that the ebonite feed helps uh, helps the, the ink flow a little bit better, um, but it's something that needs to be crafted a little more, and there's a little more inconsistency to it because it's uh, there's there's there could be some uh, manufacturing issues with that pla that 
kind of hardened rubber as opposed to uh, the plastic, which could be a little bit more consistent. Gotcha. Um, this pen here is from an Italian company by the name of Visconti. And Visconti is known to come up with some very extravagant designs and unique designs. And this particular pen uh, is called the Millionaire. And the, uh, the material on it is actually marble. Wow. And so you'll see that it's, first of all, it's not. I've it's, had some pens that look like they're made yeah. of marble, but this is no imitation, huh? No. And even though it is marble and has some weight to it, it's not overly heavy. It's not right, yeah. an insanely heavy pen. And you'll notice when you take the cap off and actually use it, that it, um, you know, it's fairly light in the hand. A lot of that weight is in the barrel. I'm guessing this number here means it was a limited run. Yes, 140 so, out of 988. Yes, so they made 998 of those pens, and that's that particular number. Um, this is one of my favorite nibs in my collection. Um, this is a um, uh, this pen is made out of uh, palladium. Oh. And you'll see that this is a, a fairly flexible nib and lays down a lot of ink. Now, that's a nice, wet, juicy nib there. It is. Palladium nib. You can, I like it when you draw a line and then the ink goes and rushes back up the line. Like yeah. It's a very satisfying feeling. Uh, Visconti, this company, they used to use gold nibs. They transferred to palladium nibs for most of their pens, and they've actually recently. Do you prefer that, or do you um, have any? It, it it was something that they did for a number of different reasons, and they've actually tra tr starting to transition back. So now they're using uh, gold nibs again. So the palladium nibs are kind of going by the wayside, at least for this particular company. They were one of the few that used those. Um, there are some pen companies that use titanium nibs. Uh, and those kind of get mixed reviews. I feel like the only other titanium nibs I've seen that I know of are from dip pens because they're like they don't corrode or yeah or I don't know what I'm. That yeah, I, like I said, from uh, a lot of folks, they get kind of mixed reviews as far as the titanium nibs go. It's in one way, it's kind of neat to have something different in your collection and unique. Yeah. But then you know, would I want a whole collection of titanium nibs? No. Yeah. There's something to be said for novelty, but also you just want something nice that works well and feels good, right? Yes. Yeah. And this does. Yeah. And you can see, like, when you were using it, that it's not super heavy, even though that is natural stone that's on there. Right. It's a stone pen. But, yeah, I didn't, I didn't feel like it was, it was harming the experience at all. Yeah, that's amazing. I like that a lot. Yeah, I, you know, I'm not super fond of the name. It's a little ostentatious, uh, the <laughs> billionaire. Uh, but uh, but this is one of my favorite Visconti pens um, just because it is a unique material and the nib is it's I like, fantastic. And I like how you choose inks that match the pens also. Oh, you have to match it up. <laughs> you, you, you know, you... If, well, for me, you know, black matches everything. Yes. <laughs> and when I first started this hobby, I was just in... I, I just had black ink, and that was it, and that's all I cared about. And then you're like, well, do, why do I... Might as well branch then, out. Yeah, and then fancy, I, yeah. I, I got crazy and got into, like, blue blacks. Uh, you know, oh, yeah. oh, that was, like, out mm, there. Weird little near black. Yeah. Thing, yeah. Uh, and then I got more into blues, and now I have, you know, 250 bottles of ink and cabinets in my office. And so it kind of goes from there. But, yes, I, it, I just think... Uh, you know, a red ink wouldn't look good coming out of this, no, you're this right. nice green pen. And this right. this ink is uh, Mont Blanc uh, Irish Green All is right. the name of that ink. Okay, Very next nice. up is, you know what? As opposed to a, a large nib, let's look at kind of a more narrow and extra fine nib that I think that you'll like. All right. Um, you, you were saying, like, when I talked about uh, like your everyday writers and things like that, I do have pens that I will get that then I really grow fond of for a period of time. And that's like the one I have on my desk that I use a lot. And then, sure. you know, and then something new comes along and you move on to something else. And for a while, this was the pen I reached for a lot. This and, was a phase you went through. Yes. Um, and this was, this is a pen from an Italian company that's somewhat new called Leonardo and this is called the Momento Zero Grande wow. and uh, this is a, a company that was an offshoot of another Italian company called Delta which is no longer in business and some of the people that were associated with there went and started their own company and they started making some very nice unique designs uh, I really like the weight of that pen and the feel of it in the hand it feels mm. very solid some um, little words here also. Yeah, that's just the name of the company and the uh, uh, the number of the pen. 
And that particular pen has a, a, an extra fine stainless steel nib. And that's... It looks golden, though. Yeah. The, a lot of times, the they'll have a coating on the outside, and that it'll have a gold look or a two-tone to, two look to it, even though it's... The main uh, construction is stainless steel yeah. or something else, yeah. And you'll see that that is, for an extra fine ni for an extra fine nib, is very smooth and consistent. And a lot of times when you get down to like that fine and extra fine, uh, uh -huh. they can get a little scratchy. And this is not? Yeah. No, not at all. And that's what I really like about that one is that, you know, like, I, okay, a lot of times some of these fountain pens don't work well on, on lower quality paper. Like this, that Visconti is not going to work great if you were like addressing an envelope on some cheap envelope paper or something like that. And this is this works on all. Sorts oh yeah, of very that, versatile. Yeah, but that would be more versatile because I could use a fountain pen when I'm drawing on a post-it note or whether I'm uh, uh, addressing an envelope, and that it is not going to bleed mm -hmm. and and be a mess, and that you could use that and it looks nice. Yeah, it uh, feels good. Yeah, and I just really like the weight of it, and uh, and the nib is just glorious. It's just really, really nice. Yeah, I like this little golden ring around it too, which I'm guessing might not actually be gold, but it, it just looks good, yeah. Yeah, uh, a lot of times some of these things, I can't recall on this one, uh, a lot of them might be gold-plated. Um, the nibs typically aren't gold-plated. You know what, that is actually an ebonite feed. And you could tell that um, usually the ebonite feeds are cut a little bit lower. And as in comparison, you could tell the difference in the, the fins mm -hmm. as well as if you look at it up close, it looks like a solid material that got kind of cut and you can see the grains in it as yeah. opposed to just straight plastic. But that's a, an ebonite feed. Yeah. Well, I, I can tell just by writing with this one why you would reach for it if you had to write something out. It feels good. And if you had to draw with that one or something like that, yeah, that I would, would... I would draw with this one. I feel like so far the ones uh, the ones we've looked at, I would draw with this one and also this one up here. Yeah, the Nakaya. Just because the lines are nice and crisp and predictable. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to get some unpredictability when you get more flex, unless that's what you're looking for in your drawing. But... Which, which a lot of people are, like people who use like brush nibs and brush brushes to yeah. paint with and draw with. It just all comes down to preference, yeah. Oh, absolutely, and what you're using it for. Yep. So let's go ahead and have you take a look at a Flex nib. All right. Uh, this pen here is from, uh, been produced by a company by the name of Papier Plume, or it's distributed by Papier Plume out of New Orleans, and it's made by the Heinz Pen Company. And mm. it's a, co a collaboration that they uh, put together uh, that is a pen and ink combo called The Blues. And... Um, a lot of Papier Plume's uh, things are relating to the South and New Orleans and things like that. And what this has on it is this has a, um, a harpoon nib from Styloflex. Yeah, that's different, huh? And so you could see that we were talking about how there's different things you can do to a nib in order to increase its flexibility. And you'll notice a couple of things here. First of all, you see on the shoulders of the nib, which is the side of the nib, there are indentations on here so that means when the nib flexes that it has more room of forgive yeah, each side has two notches notch here notch here notch here notch here yes and then also and a notch in the middle like yeah. a little hole yeah well that's the breather hole and you'll notice well but do all pens have that no, yeah so mo many most second, all second pens, guessing <laughs> most all pens have the breather hole okay. but then usually the tine the 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 tine of the slit on the pen goes down to the breather hole but you'll see here goes all the, the slit way. goes all the way down yeah it's just a different kind of nib huh? so that will also give the pen significant more flexibility so oh yeah You'll, you'll see that you'll be able to get some significant flex out of there. And that's what they actually consider to be their extra fine nib. Because if you're just writing with very, very little pressure, then it's going to be more on the extra fine. It's called a harpoon nib? Yeah. Harpoon. This one definitely has an imposing uh, silhouette as you look down at the nib. With all this, it's kind of got, yeah. Yeah, it has a lot going on there. Yeah. And, and until you take the, the cap off, it's fairly nondescript. And then you take the cap off and boom, it's got this crazy nib. But it is a pretty pretty pattern here with a lot yeah, of it's kind of a, sheens and like glimmers. A, a, dim and, a denim blue type color. Yeah, I like it. Very cool. cool. 
Okay. Um, speaking of cool colors, um, something that I, I did recently on my channel is uh, I've been fortunate enough to be able to, to work with a number of pen makers and, and learn about their business. And uh, there's a gentleman by the name of Jonathan Brooks who's <laughs> behind the, the uh, Carolina Pen Company who's one of the finest acrylic makers in the world. So you, made, did a, you did a video with him. Yeah, I, I, we actually I went down to his studio in South Carolina and I, I showed him a couple of pictures and the project was that we are going to make pictures or bake pens based on these pictures. Mm -hmm. And so we created, basically he created the custom acrylic. We created all the different colors, poured them together, mixed them together, and then let them sit. And then he actually makes the rods of acrylic. And then he uses like a lathe. Yeah, yeah. And then he turns it into a pen. So yeah. if you'd like to see how some pens are made and how the acrylics are made, then you can check out that video on my channel. But I brought one of the pens that right. we created, which I am calling the Padre Sunset because it was based off of a picture of a sunset uh, for at, uh, at a place called Petco Park is where the San Diego Padres play. And so this pen was based off of a sunset. And so you can see here, it just has a depth of color to it. It really uh, does. Yeah. Of, of reds and oranges and yellows. And all of this is custom made. It, a machine didn't make this. It was every one of these colors is mixed by hand and poured by hand and um and then also mixed by and kind of swirled together because you don't want the colors to look like someone just put a bunch of colors in a blender. Right. You want to kind of mix it in a more artistic way to make an interpretation of that that picture that you have. Kind of a combination of letting the, the fluids do their thing, but also a little bit of intention to Oh, it. yeah. yeah. And this just has a, I want to say just, but it has a, a standard uh, Yovo nib on it. What kind of nib? A uh, Yovo. That's one of the, but, the, the manufacturers. Uh, that one is just it, a medium nib. It also has an engraving of South Carolina on there. Yes. So uh, that's a cool touch. Yeah. So like when a company purchases nibs from Yovo, uh, they could have whatever they want to on them. And a, a lot of companies have it blank on the front and then or they might hire someone to laser engrave something on there um, it's m considerably less expensive for smaller manufacturers to have something laser engraved as opposed to having a, a nib that is stamped um, nibs that are stamped are are fairly expensive uh, so this is laser engraved yeah that's laser engraved like if you wanted to create nibs with stamping, it might cost you maybe fifteen, twenty thousand dollars to get a, a die mm -hmm. made. That's just the cost of the die, and then then you could make. Them. Then there's the whole process too. Yeah. yeah. Then there's the process, which is a little bit more. But it's the fact of okay, is it really worth me spending twenty thousand dollars just so I have a nib that's stamped as opposed to uh, uh, as opposed to laser engraved? Yeah, I like it. Uh, Jonathan makes some incredible looking materials. Yeah, there's like different stuff going on all over it. Different little bits of depth. You know, at first you think it's just red and yellow, but then you see a little bit of purple in here. That's oh, great. While we're looking at this, I have another one of his pens sure, that yeah. I just fell in love with. And this was another one of Jonathan's pens that was based on a picture. And I just love the turquoise and the copper in here. This almost looks like petrified wood or something. Yeah. Uh, it was kind of funny because he had made one of these pens for a customer of his, and then he had some extra rods and he made one for, at a show. And one of my friends purchased one and showed it to me. And as soon as I saw it, I knew I had to have one. And so I, I basically called Jonathan up or sent him an email and said, uh, you know that pen you sold to so-and-so? Uh, I need one just like it, please. Yeah, and, definitely. And he I can see why. I mean, that. even just, I just like how like the light catches the acrylic and stuff at different yeah. angles. You see cold cool dude different little sheens and shines. So and there's a, there are a lot of, we'll call it mass produced acrylics out there. So you might see the same material from a number of different pen makers. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. Sure. But um, but you, you might see a unique material that a uh, common across a number of pen makers, but all of Jonathan's are, are materials that he creates from hand. It's um, got a personal touch to yeah. it. Yeah. 
And a lot of times he used all sorts of different dyes. He uses a lot of makeup and things like that uh, to add some depth. And this is something that I don't is, know, it, is that where some of like the sparkles and stuff comes from? Yeah, he actually uses material like have you ever seen like the paint jobs on cars? Have that little mm -hmm. spike that he yeah. actually uses that same material that goes in those paints and yeah. uh, the automotive paints and uses it on here. And like this pen is polished. And this one is a matte finish. And these are like the same material. And it's just the, how you finish it. Um, and it can give it a much different look, um, whether it's a matte finish or whether it's polished, just by how you, uh, you know, a, a process at the end. But the actual material is virtually the same. Yeah, it's, those are really cool. So, yeah, those are ones that I enjoy a great deal. Okay, let's take a look at another... Arushi lacquer pen and this is you know we were talking about pens I've been obsessed over this is kind of my latest obsession all right and this pen is truly a piece of art it is from a Japanese company by the name of Wancher and the outer coating is covered with a uh, with layers of Arushi lacquer but what's special about this pen is that there is a leaf here and this is an actual leaf from a Japanese rose bush Wow. And what they do is they flatten the leaf and they, they moisturize it and then they actually apply it to the pen. And then once it's on here, they put some gold powder on here as well as some layers of uh, clear Urushi lacquer. And so it just looks beautiful and it's an actual leaf that gets incorporated into the pen. It looks like there's some of the gold in the rest of the lacquer or something too. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if there yeah. is. So there's a real leaf in there. Yeah, that's a real leaf in there. And, and so it has a bit of texture oh, to it's it. It's an amazing texture, yeah. But it doesn't feel like it's gonna rub off over time or no, things yeah. like that. Oh yeah, it feels amazing. Uh, this one has a stainless steel nib as well. It's got kind of a spring release there too. Yeah, what some pens have is um, a spring, it's not a spring release, but it's a spring inner cap. And that's so that when you cap it, it puts a little bit of pressure on have... here. And so it kind of creates a seal so that it's less likely to dry out mm. when the cap is on the pen. Uh, they call it their slip and seal mechanism. Oh, it's red ink. Is that to go with the rose leaf? Oh, yeah. That pen, that ink is actually uh, from Germany. It's from Diamine. And, uh, <laughs> I can't spell seal. <laughs> it's uh, a Diamine ink, and they came out with some German exclusive inks that all were based on uh, rock and roll songs. And so this particular ink is called uh, Communication Breakdown, which mm -hmm. is a Led Zeppelin mm -hmm. song. Uh, they have like Smoke on the Water, November Rain, Purple Rain. They have kind of a, a series of inks. And uh, that's the ink I've been using a lot lately. And it's kind of a nice reddish brown that really matches that pen well. This is very smooth, by the way. Another smooth one. Yes. And what's interesting is, though, even though this is, you know, an, another Steel Yovo nib, that each nib is going to have its own personality. And this it, is this is the same nib of, as I've used before. Yeah, it feels oh, it doesn't it feels different somehow. I don't know. Uh, and you could get maybe I'm just out of touch. Well, but you could get, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you could um, get different feelings on it by the different grinds, right? And maybe the weight of the pen and mm -hmm. how it feels in your hand. Maybe the also polishing. Feels Sometimes yeah. the ink can add a little bit more viscosity to it. Yeah, yeah, I like the yeah the ink is cool too. I like that. Yeah, very cool pen. What, what company was this? Uh, the name of that company is called Wancher. W-A-N-C-H-E-R. Wancher. Very and, cool. and they've been making some some very unique and interesting pens lately. And uh, and that one is one that I particularly enjoyed. Not one is because it performs fantastic as well, but it looks unique. And uh, you know, if you've been collecting pens for a while, sometimes it takes a while. It's something a little additional to like pique your interest. Yeah. And something like this is one of those pens that, like, okay, if I go to run to a pen show, I'll usually carry a pen with me in my pocket that is one that, okay, when I meet people or talk to someone, it's like, hey, check this out. And uh, the next pen show I go to, this will be the pen I take with me because it's something you'll bring out and people look at and they'll be like, wow. oh, conversation piece. Yeah, yeah, it's like something cool that they haven't seen before mm -hmm. and, and something that's interesting. It is interesting, yeah. 
The next thing I have for you is a pen. Speaking of pens that I would carry around with me, this is a pen that I carried around with me to a couple of shows. And this is another pen from Wancher, but it's a, um, a collaboration between Wancher and Sailor. I noticed there's a little anchor on the end of it. Yes, that is from Sailor. And this is called the Japan Blue. What's unique about this pen is the barrel and cap are made of a hammered metal. Yeah, it has a very cool texture, yeah. And it's very cool to the touch. I know that uh, it's... Whoa, it's freezing, you mean. Yes. <laughs> and and that will actually, as you use the pen, it'll warm up as it... Yeah, it's uh, absolutely you know, frigid when I first picked it up. Just That's because amazing. it's been kind of sitting here in the air conditioning. Yeah. Uh, but this particular pen uh, has uh, a very fine nib. And it's, it's a Japanese, well, actually, it's a medium nib, but it's a Japanese medium nib. And you'll find that Japanese nibs are kind of one step down from Western nibs. So if it says a, a Japanese medium is kind of more like a Western fine. Hmm. That is interesting. And so you'll notice here that this one, even though this is a, uh, uh, I think that's a 14 karat gold nib on there, mm -hmm. uh, that it's, even though it says medium, it is going to be much more of a finer line. Medium, or it's medium, as they say. Yeah. Now, this particular pen, you might, if you do want to post it, this is interesting because you actually snap it to post it. Oh, let me give it a shot. Oh, that's very satisfying. Yeah, there's certain capping mechanisms and things like that that are satisfying, and that particular snap there is is always Just been clicks very right on. Yeah. yeah. So, this, yeah, this, I'm very entranced by this hammered metal, yeah. And that's all hand hammered. Hand hammered, but uh, it's got a uniformity to it. Yeah. Which is impressive, yeah. Let me try writing with it on the back there. And that's one that I don't mind writing with it. I don't think it back weights it too much. Sometimes I just like putting the cap on the back so it doesn't roll off the desk or something. But. Yes, especially if it's one that doesn't have a, uh, a clip on it. And a lot of times I'm either holding it in my hand or yeah. because you don't want it to roll around. Yeah, that's a nice one. Nice color scheme too, very crisp. Very cool, I like that. But yeah, that's one that, you know, as soon as you hand it to someone and they feel that coolness of that metal, it's like a... It felt like you had it in the freezer before you handed it to me. It's really weird. <laughs> but now you can feel it's significantly warmer. Yeah. Just from the heat from your hand. Okay. Um, next up is a pen that is, we'll just say one that has a, a very uh, a big reputation mm -hmm. as being kind of a lot of people's grail pen oh. of their their holy grail pen and it's a considered a grail pen for a number of reasons and this is a classic pens lb5 and there's a number of reasons why this is special this is actually a collaboration between uh, a company by the name of classic pens and sailor again so that's why you see sailor uh written on the uh, uh written on the band as well as so these some of these parts are sailor parts yeah and i see it says 34 out of 50. that's a yes. small batch yes absolutely and that's one reason why these are considered grail pens there was a set of it was their five or six colors and each one was only they only made 50 of each of these pens the, the, the acrylic for this particular pen is made in a very unique way um, where it's called, it's called diffusion bonded acrylic to where normally the acrylic kind of goes this direction. But in this one, imagine if the acrylic was stacked up on top of each other and then bonded on a molecular level and then cut opposite wise so basically yeah, you're seeing looks, all the kind of like they took a core sample yeah some acrylic or something I, that's kind of what it is but the um the strength of it is considerable because it's the pieces are literally bonded together on a molecular level um the it the nib on here is a sailor nib and it's what's called their king of pin nib um, that size nib and style of nib is on a number of their king of pens. Uh, and of, of all of my nibs in my collection, I'd say like the king of pen nibs that I have are some of my favorite. And even though I have a number of them in my collection, like I mentioned before, a, every nib has its own personality. So even though I might have five or six different 
king of pen sized medium nibs, each one feels just a little bit different. It's a big nib too. King of pen. It's awesome. But that's called the Classic Pens LB5. And so those have been long sold out, and so very rarely do they come up for sale. Um, and it's one of those pens that, uh, you know, when people buy a pen, for the most part, they're not buying them for an investment. Uh, but that that is one that if you sell it, you probably could sell it for more than what you purchased it for. Yeah, definitely has a cool investment, yeah. It's one of those ones you have to keep your eye out, and see if it oh. pops up on the market. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And then there'll be ones that... Um, uh, you know that the people overprice considerably and and hope sell just because they know that it's, people are desperate. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's 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 people out there that are desperate and because it it is so rare to come up and it is such a favorite pen of of so many people that there's kind of a, an aura around it. Um, you know, it's not it's kind of a, a small club that you're in. <laughs> and it's so, beautiful. Some people really like the the limited editions. Like I have one that's a limited edition of fifteen, and and that's kind of cool. To where you're like, okay, there was only fifteen of these pens made, and I have. Are there like meetups of the other fifteen people? I, no, we don't. <laughs> I don't know who the other fourteen are, but uh, yeah. maybe uh, maybe one day I'll I'll be able to find some of the other folks. Yeah, that'd be cool. Very okay. Nice. Speaking of limited editions and pens that are desirable, um, this was a pen that was a grail pen of mine for a very long time. It was something that I wanted, but then it was long sold out and I kind of never really thought I would end up with it. Um, and it's, it, as would happen in life when you're not expecting it to happen, then all of a sudden I was presented with an opportunity to purchase a brand new one at, we'll call it a reasonable price. <laughs> and I had to jump at it because I knew that if I was ever going to buy it, it was now because I'd never pay more than this. And that is a Mont Blanc Alfred Hitchcock. Uh, Mont Blanc does a very good job of coming out with uh, a number of pens in what they're called their Great Characters series, where they have pens that are based on different people. Like uh, actually two weeks ago or something like that, I reviewed their latest release uh, that was based on Walt Disney and was a Disney pen. And this pen is based on the work of Alf the uh, film director Alfred Hitchcock. And they incorporate all sorts of things into the design to relate to that person. So one, you could see for the clip, they have a knife, which refers to the movie Psycho. Uh, the barrel of this pen is uh, a precious resin that's engraved in a way that when you twist it, kind of has a mesmerizing look to it that is meant to invoke the opening title sequence of the film Vertigo. Uh, then there are other things like there's little notch marks here mm. in the piston knob. There's a, a notch mark there for each one of Hitchcock's films that he made. Uh, I think it was 56, something along those lines. And so there's, there's lots of references to Hitchcock within the pen itself. And then when you end up, actually what's written on the... the yeah, there's a date here. Yeah, that's the, the date and the information that was on the, the film canister on the first day of shooting the movie Psycho. And it says, and in the time too, 2.43 p.m. And it says like Phoenix, Arizona mm -hmm. or something because that was where they filmed the first day of yeah, shooting in that's Psycho. That's a very cool attention to detail all around. Uh, they do an excellent job with their incorporating... Uh, references to people into their pens. I did one of James Dean, one of, they did one of Marilyn Monroe. The James Dean one had a lot of references to its films that were amazing. And you can see this has a custom nib on it that has Hitchcock's profile. Oh, on yeah, I was trying nib. to figure out what that was. Yeah, it's uh, uh, this way. Yeah. yeah, it's his caricature that he would, um, that he would draw. So it's his famous profile that he would write or draw. Uh, and that's a very nice nib as well. The ink that's in there is an ink from a company called Van S, who's a pen store in uh, in uh, Arkansas. And when this when this pen came out, they had they had a special edition ink that came with it called the Alfred Hitchcock ink, and it was kind of a blood red. And the ink sold out. And nowadays, it's very hard to come by. If you wanted to purchase a bottle of that ink, if it ever comes up, it's usually about a hundred dollars for that bottle. 
And while I would love to have a bottle of it, I don't want to spend that much on a <laughs> bottle of ink. Uh, but I feel like that's one of those bottles of ink you just buy and you're like, yeah, I'll just put it on the shelf. And I, use would, other red inks. It would be yeah. just to have it as a pairing with the uh, the pen. But the but Van S, uh, they are a very good pen shop and have a lot of great inks. And they have begun producing some of their own inks. And they produced this ink here, uh, which is called Good Evening, which is a reference to uh, Hitchcock and his TV show and it's an ink that looks very closely uh, uh, very close to that Mont Blanc ink which is no longer produced and no longer available. Now I would say this pen is as heavy if not heavier than that marble one. Yes. Uh, but now this one, I wish it was a little bit longer. Now it was a little short in the hand. It could be a little bit longer, but you can't post this one. Yeah. Just it's not meant to be posted, and you wouldn't want to because this cap is extremely heavy. And this one's a little shorter. I just I wish it was just slightly longer. But um, but I love this pen, and it oh, yeah, was it's, it's it, very cool. It, it was a Grail pen because I, uh, I I love film. I love studying films. I went to film school for a while, and Hitchcock was one of my favorite directors. So it kind of hit on a number. Of of different interests right yeah. and so it's like okay if they make a pen dedicated to one of the people you really admire yeah. then it just makes you want it that much more yeah definitely okay when it comes to materials for a pen there's certain materials that are, are are really coveted and one of the most coveted materials that you'll ever find is something called arco celluloid hmm. um, is that something you've heard of I've before I have not. There was a, uh, a company by the name of Omos, who is no longer around, but uh, were based in uh, Italy. And they produced, for a period of time, this Arco celluloid. Um, it was so unique that it's actually illegal to make it now because it was too dangerous to actually manufacture. Um, it can be, uh, uh, you don't want to put a, a flame to it. It can yeah. be. Uh, it Even can after be, it's done. Yeah, being made yeah. Or... You don't want, you know, you, you want to be careful with it. Not that you're putting your pens close to flames and things like that. But that's why it's not even being manufactured anymore. It was actually too dangerous to even make. Yeah. That's like you'll hear things about like celluloid, like film and will go up in flame. And that's it's very, uh, very flame, re well, not re re resistant, but uh, that uh, it will catch on fire very easily. And this is arco celluloid now what happened was this was th there was pens that omos produced and they produced their arco celluloid and then when they actually went out of business uh, this company here actually purchased a lot of their rod stock that they still had in hand and you can see here the layers of if you hold it on the side there's mm -hmm. layers of this arco celluloid and then once you get to the top then you kind of get a, a more layered look to it now there's people who who oh, don't care beautiful. for this material yeah. and but i just love it so this, i think it's amazing is and, this pen in this state extremely flammable i, I don't want to test it because it was rather <laughs> expensive yeah but um if, if you feel like some someone somewhere on some fountain pen forum yes yeah. has, has tried it. <laughs> I, it, it it's been uh, arco is so uh put their yeah pen too close to the fireplace or something i don't want to test it no i, I don't i don't blame you i don't think you should um and this company is uh, uh asc or the armano Sm uh, simoni club yeah i see this yeah logo. and they're the company that had purchased the inventory uh, oh. of omas and have been producing a, a few of those pens as the arco lasts because it's going to be gone if not gone, it should be gone fairly soon. And so the material is extremely rare as well. Yeah. So uh, was, that that pen is huge. That's one of the larger pens in my collection. I was very pleased to see this band was also right here. It's just also is like du duplicated here. Yes. Very cool. Um, it's kind of a Greek key design yeah. that was uh, prevalent in uh, some of Omos's uh, designs as well. I don't know how to spell Arco Celluloid. Uh, it's A-R-C-O. You're on your own for celluloid. That's my guess. Something like that. Yeah. And that's some, a very large nib as well. Some flames underneath. Is <laughs> First don't get those flames close to that pen. <laughs> yeah, this is very cool. And it's got kind of some chevrons here too. Yes, and as you can see, with 
with some pens you get some what's called nib creep uh, where the ink kind of creeps out onto the nib. Like if I really cleaned that, it would come clean, but then after a little it while, come back again, it comes yeah. back again. And there's some nibs that actually look kind of cooler when there's some nib creep on there. Yeah, no, it's not a bad look. Some are more annoying than others, but other ones, uh, you know, I don't mind. And then like that one, it seems like I clean it and then it comes right back. And so you just, okay, that's the way it's going to be. Yeah, maybe, was it intended to be like that? Think, I don't or? know if it's an intentional design or just a byproduct of the design. Yeah. That's very cool. It, yes. feels, it feels good in your hand. It's nice and long. Yes. Yeah. Now, this one actually has a different filling system. It's not a cartridge or not a converter. You actually, let me just see if I can do this without actually engaging it. Um, this is like like a pneumatic filler. What you do is you actually mm -hmm. pull this back. Wow. And, and then there, even that is very ornate. Yeah. There's a tiny little hole here at the end of the barrel. I don't know if you can see at the, or at the end of the, in there. Yeah. And so what happens is there is an actual a sack in a rubber sack inside here, and you actually when you you dip this into your ink, you put your finger over this hole, and when you push it down, then it creates a vacuum in here and pushes down on the sack. Then you pull it back up. No, and then you just let go of it, and it, oh, it has the air. Vacuum. The vacuum oh. will then suck the pen in. So I can do this. And no ink comes out because your finger is not. Available. Yes, but if I put my finger on it and shoved it in, then ink would start to drip out on here. But I just think it's a nice detail that there is some uh, some branding and things like that on this piece that you yeah, really no, that's very cool. Yeah. You really only see when you're putting this yeah. pen together. Very very cool attention to detail in that part. Okay, one more, and I left the big boy for last. Oh, all right. I mentioned before. You might be able to write with a two thousand dollar pen, and this is uh, another pen that a lot of people have really considered to be uh, a Grail pen for them. <laughs> this is the Namiki Emperor. Now, believe it or not, this is like the entry level Namiki Emperor. Uh, there is a lot of Machie designs, which is the the art designs and things like that, and the mm -hmm. painting that go on the pen. These pens can sell for upwards of ten and twenty thousand dollars with some of the artistic designs. This is an an ebonite pen, which is covered with a red arushi lacquer, so um, that we discussed earlier. And even though this pen is enormous, just as comparison, one of the smaller pens we had earlier, this was the Japan Blue. You can see there's a... Right, and this didn't feel small. No. Yeah. Um, but you can see that this is, is comically large. But one thing that you will find is even though this is a comically large pen, it is extremely usable and very comfortable in the hand. And... Here, I'll even let you open that up and take a look at this nib. This is a number 50 nib. And what does that mean? Uh, that's just the size, like the... So it's um, like a... This was a... We'll show it when we open it up, but uh, like this well, other pilot... <laughs> it's like a shovel. Yeah. This was a number 30 nib, and that's a number 50 nib from yeah. the same company. Wow. So, and this is, this pen, this nib is enormous. Oh, wow. Even the, the feed thing? Yeah. The feed is has some uh, some red lacquer on it. Wow. And Wait, what is this design on there? Um, the design up top is Mount Fuji. So you could, it's like a snow cap oh, of oh, Mount I see Fuji. That now. Yeah. And then that, uh, that design is Namiki's design. And Namiki is kind of, we'll say, the luxury uh, uh, brand of Pilot. Yeah. I just, um, I don't know. It just, it's so... It's like minimal, but mm -hmm. it's still so much at the yes. same time, right? Now, even though you can post that pen, you really don't want to. Because, kind of for the same reason as that. Yeah, that I don't one. like uh, the Arushi lacquer getting rubbed, but then also, okay, it's big enough as it is. You don't need to. It's, right. You don't need to to post that thing. Is there a seam here? Yes. Oh, that this is a Japanese um, eyedropper pen. That's what. Um, how you fill up this pen? What I, I didn't, I couldn't see it. I just barely oh, felt yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You, you, that's the the tolerances are very nice, and you really don't even see it unless you you take a look at it or feel it. What you do is, I won't unscrew this, but yeah. you actually unscrew this, and um, you could you fill up this entire barrel with ink or as much of 
it as you want. And then what happens is the ink flows, there is a, a little piston in here that seals off the section from the back section. And so you write with it for a while with the ink that's in here. Once you run out of ink, all you do is open up this back. Yeah, that, that, this came out of nowhere. Yeah, open up this back just a little bit and then wait for a second, ink flows into the, the forward section. And then once you're done, you just seal it back up again and the two chambers are separated and you're ready to write. So what you did just now didn't really do anything because... Uh, um, it, it didn't do anything because I, I had primed it before. Gotcha, but yeah. if, the, if you had run out of ink in this forward section, then you do that and then you can write some more. Uh, that's helpful on airplanes and things like that so that when, if you fly with with pens you have to worry about the pressure yeah you have to worry about the pressure so you should always like have them nip, facing nib up um mm -hmm. but i've written on on planes with that pen and um and, and it works just fine yeah, of course it does, the, it does weirdly enough it doesn't feel too big right now no yeah. even though it looks huge yeah it's very light it looks li it's lighter than you'd think it would be yeah the cap is almost as big as the body of the pen i think is part of the reason yes um, but it's a glorious nib to write with as well. I'll sign the waiver now. <laughs> so here's the sign on the, the X. Oh, it feels great. Oh, that was a dream. I, I write a lot of letters with that pen. I, I get folks that will write me letters, which is... Do they know you're writing a letter to them with a $2,000 pen? Uh, what's neat about... Um, What's nice about uh, communicating with folks via letter is, first of all, we, you don't get a lot of handwritten letters that it's much true, anymore. Yeah. And so, it's really, first of all, it's nice to hear from friends and nice to hear from viewers. It's and, good to get mail, And get yeah. that feedback. But then also, it's just an excuse to use your pens. And what you'll find a lot is with fountain pen folks is they'll write a letter and then it, either in the letter or at the bottom of the letter, usually folks will talk about what list, what pen they used. And the ink. And maybe? the ink. Yeah. Um, like this particular ink is from a company called Franklin Kristoff, which is located in uh, just north of Raleigh, North Carolina. And this uh, ink is called Arushi Red is the name of that particular ink. Uh, this is, is different and amazing, just like the huge nib, huge pen, but it's not it doesn't feel comical like a, yeah i don't feel like a clown using it you know like, well you know. i will say when i'm out when i'm on an airplane and i'm using that i do get looks from the person next to me like what on earth is this guy writing with it's, but i feel like you might get looks like that with any almost any fountain pen yes so out in the wild yeah yes and what's amazing about this nib is even though it is enormous that's the largest pen in my or nib in my collection by far when you're writing with it it just feels like a normal medium nib it yeah. doesn't like some of these other nibs, especially like the uh, like the Millionaire, it had a large nib, but when you wrote with it, it had more flex and bounce, and it and laid down like a larger line. Oh, this that feels one, very natural. Like I'm having no trouble. It, it doesn't feel weird or off at all. Like yeah, it's great. It's great. It's wonderful. <laughs> so that's the one thing that really surprised me about that is how natural it feels. Like you said, when you're writing with it, and it just feels. Um, it feels like a normal meat gold nib. Somehow. Yeah. Even I, I'm not sure how they the do that. the size of an actual submarine. Yes, absolutely. Yes, it is it's huge. <laughs> um, it does fit in a pocket, you know, like a breast pocket. Yeah. Now, I don't know, your pocket will look, look a little shallow. But it does, uh, the clip does, at least on some of my shirts. Yeah, I have a, I have a wimpy pocket. It's yeah. not my, it's not but, the best. But it will like, well, barely get in there so yeah. that, um, so that, you know, you could actually get it in there if I'm, if, you know, if I have a breast pocket at work or something like that, that I could actually put it in so there. So you would carry this pen around? I, I, I use all of my pens. That's good. So you I, don't have what, some, is there like a word for pen fear like well yeah that you know, i mean you, you sometimes you get like people who buy nice cars and leave them in the garage all the time that it sometimes people get surprised when you're like saying oh you took that pen out of the house or you yeah. type of thing or you actually you know gave it to someone else to let them write with it or things like that but i i tend to you know i buy my pens i use my pens that's, that's one thing that's one cool thing about collecting pens is you are collecting something that you get to use it's not like you're buying uh, something that just sits on a shelf and you get to look at. It, it is a piece of functional art that you get to use on a you know, as, as often as you want. Yeah. And so that's why, like I said, I kind of rotate through my collection because it's it's fun to write with a different pen every day. And that could be 
a $15 pen or a $2,000 pen that it's, I think it's important to kind of vary through those. And, um, and people will see on Instagram, like we said earlier, the pens I use on a daily basis really vary there, you know, and cause I kind of work through my entire collection. No, I definitely agree with that. Cause like I have one or two vintage pens and one of the things I like daydreaming about them is maybe all the people that have had it before all the lines and words it might've drawn and written before and if someone just had it in a little pen display for the previous 50 100 years or whatever that's not very exciting well there's a history behind it right Uh, it's okay it's one thing to have a pen but it's another thing to have a pen with a story behind it and and something like you know when i can pull out one of the like the 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 night sky sakura or something like that and i can bring out that pen and it could lead to a 10 minute conversation of me explaining exactly you know how the gentleman puts this together and the amazing work that it does and there's a story behind it uh or maybe i you know i bought this pen on a vacation or bought it on a trip and when you can associate a memory to something like that it 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 turns it in from a pen into like more of a cherished possession yeah no i definitely agree so so of these things which pen did you like the most or which one would you what because everyone's tastes are different which one did you feel uh, especially matched up with well with your tastes? Well, let me look through back here at some of the the little scribbles I wrote. Of course, of course, I was impressed with this big one, of course, but that was just the uh, it has its own kind of gravitas. Yeah, know, there's but, kind of an aura around it. Yeah, um, I the one that stuck in my mind the most um, was. This one for the Nakaya? Reason. Yeah. I'm not sure why. Let me let me try it out again if you don't mind. No, go right ahead. Some something about how it felt. Nakaya. Here, let me sneak something else to you. This is a different Nakaya pen. Oh. And it, um oh, it's like the same but different. Yes. This oh, is no, called... I, I got it off again. Oh, look what you've done. <laughs> Wait a second. There you go. This one, I know we said we were done, but this is the Nakaya, and this is called a Decapod Twist. And this is a good example of the Arushi lacquer and how they could make the different layers and then polish the edges down to come up with a unique look to it. And so it has a twist design um, where they added... And basically what ends up happening is they have a lighter colored Arushi lacquer that they've layered on there. And then the last few layers are a darker layer. And then they polish some of it off to end up getting that look. And you can see that on here, they've done that a bit yeah. on the edges. But on here, it's just a little bit more evident. That yeah, kind of shows through. Yeah. Kind of got a, a two-tone. Mm-hmm. And that one will have a very similar feel to it. Yeah. Yeah, it's like how kind of crisp it feels. In the- yeah, it's it's much more firm. You're not getting lots of flex or bounce or anything like that out of no out of those nibs. But it doesn't feel like it's holding back either. You know? No. And, and that's a personal preference. Some people like that, and other people want more of that soft, glassy feel that, like you got with that one pilot that was just extraordinarily right. smooth. It was very buttery. Yeah. And, and some people just. It, it, for them, that's just, okay, how smooth is this nib? Like, how buttery is yeah, that like nib? That pilot would be great. Like, I would enjoy that for, like, writing letters and stuff, yeah. Now, I have heard of people that one reason why they get into and collect pens is for improving their handwriting. Do you think that's a thing that happens? Or I, I feel like improving your handwriting is just something you have to practice at and do. <laughs> yes, I think you have to practice at that. And maybe it's it's kind of a result to where, you know, if you had a nice pen, then it makes you feel like you want to improve your handwriting yeah, you're, more. You're more likely to go out of your way. And, yeah. uh, and that um, I, I receive letters from some people that are, have amazing handwriting and sometimes a fountain pen can make that handwriting look that much better and nicer and it can look very cool. Now, I will be the first one to admit that my handwriting is a bit of chicken scratch and not the most pleasant thing to look at, but... Um, I've seen yours on Instagram. It looks fine. <laughs> so, but it's um, but it, it's it's unique. I will say it's unique and it's my, you know, it, it's my own creation. That's good. Yeah. And uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm owning it, but... Um, 
but there are some people that can are very talented in the way that they write and using a fountain pen like that just makes it look that much better yeah. and and adds a lot of flair to it that uh, that I kind of envy but then I would need to I need to apply myself to actually work, work do that it's almost like art that uh, I can say I'm terrible at art but it's probably because I just haven't practiced yeah, enough just and applied a myself the time and effort sort of thing yeah, yeah. you got to put in the time you got to put in the effort and the same could be said for handwriting it's almost like you have to break down your handwriting and unlearn everything so only so many hours run. in the day though you know it's, yes it's tough to do everything but prioritize yes exactly so uh, you know what I'm glad that we have I had a chance to show these to you well, I'm really thankful you had a chance to come today be on here I'm really thankful so uh these are all amazing pens. Cool. Yeah, make sure you all follow David Parker, Fig Boot on pens. Is yes, that right? If you just search for Fig Boot, F I G B O O T, yeah. the uh, links to a bunch of his stuff yeah. are down here in the description. So go click on them, follow him. You know, he's got YouTube, Instagram, check out his Patreon. It's going to be great. He's well, got thanks. a bunch of really informative stuff. And uh, it's it's wonderful. I now I would admit that I'd, it's more pens than art. You're not going to find as much art there, but um, I, I tend to try to get into a lot of details in my reviews about the history of the pen and why and what's the meaning behind things and like something with like that Hitchcock pen go into all the symbolism to, to try to make it a little bit more interesting and understand what's going on or what's the story behind this pen other than just oh okay this is a pen you've seen a hundred times and here's a review so I, I try to make it as I try to look at it and saying okay what what would interest me about this pen and then try to convey that information as long, along and uh, and it's fun I have a good time with my channel Good. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I'm, as if, if you have a good time, I think everyone else will, too. I think that's what matters. Cool. Yeah. Well, thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. All right. See you later, everyone. Have a good one. Goodbye.